Holy crap. <clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome, you guys. Welcome and hello. Today is freaking Thursday, which means it's freaking vlog day. Yeah, I got a full on action packed vlog for you guys tonight. Uh, no more timestamps on the screen. It's been years since I've been able to do that. Literal years. But my main man, Jeremy V, he's going to be in the chat and he's going to gather He's kind enough to gather all of these timestamps and put them as the first pinned comment. So anybody watching the replay, all the timestamps are going to be the first pinned comment right underneath this video, you guys. But welcome. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one tonight. I can already feel us running a little bit long. Uh, the, we got some news and advocacy to talk about tonight that's pretty critical. It's pretty hypercritical. In addition to some pretty hypercritical news and advocacy, we got the final Final retro vape, you know, uh, box thing. I started this series unofficially of opening up retro boxes. Today marks number 10, the 10th box is tonight, and it is the tackle box. Uh, I want to spend a lot of time on this tackle box, and I'm considering doing the tackle box in two parts, and I'm not even joking. There is so much to go through here. So let me do a quick rundown for you, Jim. Uh, I definitely have uh, a liquid that I want to try. You guys are going to help me decide that. I got a beer check. Uh, what I've been vaping is kind of sitting right here. I do have mail, which, holy crap, I'm going to have to uh, quickly run during the bumper and try to get my mail, but I do have some mail. Um, we got the retro vape box. Oh, we got the retro vape box. And if we have time at the end of this vlog, we're going to do a little getting to know Grim Green. I'm going to play you guys a song. We're going to hang out together and we're going to listen to a song. Is the audio out of sync for you, Mark? Uh, try to hit that refresh. If it's still out of sync for you, let me know. Otherwise... Uh, Otherwise, things should be moving on, straightforward, right ahead. Uh, so we're gonna start this vlog with my with that thing. It's that thing. It's my new favorite thing. Vaping is better than smoking. You son of a bitch. Technically, yes, but so what? <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not my new favorite thing, but I am going to do my new favorite thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. You know, here's the thing real quick, real quickly on that Cuomo thing. And I know I've said this in the vlog and I know I'll probably say it again. And then on Tuesday, bro, Newsday, a bunch of times more, but it's like Matt Cully said on Twitter, governor Cuomo, as funny as that is, and as infuriating as it is, and how now we're kind of able to laugh about it a little bit, governor Cuomo doing that it's like Matt Cully said on Twitter, We're, we are in an age now where people in power, lawmakers and policymakers and governors and people with real power are willing to identify and admit the health benefits to vaping, but in that same breath are also willing to completely dismiss them. That's the precedent that he set. And that's why that little clip, I laugh at it every time, but it sends me into rage mode. Just pure up to 11, 9,000 rage mode. You know what doesn't get me into rage mode? Tyler. In fact, I would like to hear, I would like to finally do that thing that's my new favorite thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. So right now, let's all hear from Tyler. Howdy, Nick. Whoops. Tyler here. Uh, <laughs> the Tyler I'll, video's I'll too big. Waiting in line at Tyler, okay, it's just your, your face now, workplace. Tyler. Anyway, just thought I'd You know what, uh, that's not, up. look, that's not fair to Tyler. I didn't realize that video was so gigantic. Uh, I, I did it to myself. I edited it, in, you know, and put it together. But now let's look at Tyler's face. Let's watch Tyler's face. You know, this was a much better shot. He, he framed himself much better than this. What say you now, Tyler? Howdy, Nick. Tyler here. Uh, about out of all places, I am waiting in line at Starbucks, your old workplace. Anyway, just thought I'd uh, hop on real quick and say thank you for everything you've done for the community, all the advocacy, and uh, been a subscriber for, uh, I'd say, four or five years now. Been vaping for maybe six or seven. Um, anyway, yeah, I'd like, uh, I'd appreciate if you give my wife a shout out. Her name is Lindsay. Um, anyway, yeah, thanks for everything you do, and uh, let's keep vaping. Blotto RTA, old school Smoant, Sharon 218. Cheers. Peace out. Thanks again, Nick. 
Yes, boosh. There's a fist bump right there for you, Tyler. Bump that fist. Bump that fist. Bump your screen. There's a fist bump for you. There's a fist bump for Lindsay. Really appreciate the kind words, Tyler. Congratulations. Not smoking is awesome, right? I mean, chat, <laughs> not smoking is awesome. Uh, appreciate the kind words, Tyler. And if anybody else out there watching right now, if you have a video similar to Tyler, not similar to Tyler, you can send it on over to me, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject to that one thing. Chances are I'll see the attachment and you never know, you might get featured right here at the beginning of a vlog video. And speaking of vlog videos, let me say this real quickly. No real need to make a timestamp here, Jeremy, if you don't want to. Um, my schedule for the rest of the year is as follows. This week, obviously everything was normal. Next week, dude, everything's gonna be normal again for one more week. The last two weeks of December, I'm, I'm gone. I'm out of here, I'm Casper, I am disappeared, I am nowhere to be found. That first Monday, I think it's the 22nd, I'm gonna do a build stream and that's gonna be my last video of the year. There's not gonna be a Tuesday Bro Tuesday or vlog for two weeks because Grim Green is tired, Grim Green wants to celebrate Christmas with my wife, Grim Green wants to sit on the couch and be lazy and watch Netflix Grim Green just needs to take a little bit of a break. So I'm gonna take the two weeks, last two weeks of December off and then, you know, whatever, January 1st, we hit, we hit the ground running again. So just so you guys know, that's my schedule. Don't worry, I'll put it in the description. I'll mention it a bunch more times just so everybody's, uh, just so everybody's up to speed. I don't, you know what, Twisted Hex, I don't know. I've got a long history, you know, a prolific, past of uh of vlogs go watch uh go spend go take a thursday night twisted hex take a random thursday night take next thursday no the week after next thursday and just go watch a vlog from like 2013 it's ridiculous there's ridiculous go watch an old vlog uh oh is a birthday Oh, it's vape and juggalo 88's birthday there was some more birthdays i think i had to celebrate some birthday today. There was another birthday today. And I can't remember who it was and that's driving me insane. Happy birthday to you, Vaping Juggalo 88. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Juggalo 88. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, bro. Hope uh, that goes for every birthday. <laughs> that goes for every birthday. I appreciate that, Addie Tooney. It is. It's going to be a little bit of a, just a relax, a reset. You know, it, it just needs to happen every once in a while. I was planning on doing this last year and it didn't really happen last year because of, you know, flying to New Zealand and going to the Oceana Expo and like, look, that was fun. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I intended to take a break in 20. 2018, but then Ivali happened. Then I was taking a break in 2019, but then New Zealand happened, and I'm definitely taking the last two weeks of, no, of December off. Last two weeks of December, dunzo. Okay, so now moving on with that. Um, I want to drink some beer. That's just what I want to do. I decided, so let's have at it. Who sent me this beer? I don't remember who sent me this beer. I don't remember who sent me this beer, but I'm drinking it anyway. Nitro Vanilla Porter. Look at that. Flavored beer. Are you kidding me? Fl vanilla flavored beer? Uh, uh, no, nobody's going to think about the kids. Nobody's gonna think about the <laughs> nobody's gonna think about the children this time around. It's unbelievable. All right, so this is a nitro guy. So I'm gonna try to pour this like, you know, quickly where you do the nitro thing. It's a nitro stout or nitro porter rather, uh, Breckenridge, Colorado. I don't remember who sent this to me. We've had this on the vlog before. Oh, look at that hot nitro action! I always get really nervous pouring beers like that. But we got the, that nitro action is happening and it's just a beautiful thing. Look how creamy that looks. Doesn't that just look like the creamiest vanilla, creamy, cream vanilla porter that you've ever had in your life? I believe this is only 
So, yeah, 5.4%. 5.4%. That's it. All good. So we, we don't have to worry about a crazy vlog tonight. Here you go, guys. Cheers. Thank you so much for coming out. I hope you got something uh, cold and frosty next to you. Yeah, it's great. It's really upfront, really sweet, sweet vanilla. Like, I have a sweet tooth. This is a very sweet, sweet, upfront, sweet vanilla porter. Uh, it's very thick in the mouth, but it also has a really hyper clean finish. When you drink it down, it's almost like just water, like it's just gone. When you're kind of chugging it, it has a density in your mouth. That sweetness, the vanilla, the density. Creamy, creamy nitro top. It's great. It's great. This is a great beer. I've had it before. Uh, don't remember. Uh, don't remember where it came from. But someone sent me a four pack. Was that? Uh, I didn't write the name on the bottom. I didn't write any names on the bottom of any of these cans. This was one of those things where I'm like, I'll remember. Yeah. I will remember. No need to write anything down. Now I'm gonna pair this with Yig. First, let's pair it with the tobacco because why not? Because who cares? Let's try tobacco. No, that's not very good. It's okay. Tobacco's pair with basically every beer. Let me try Yig. Yeah, see, that's incredible. That's a spectacular beer pairing. Uh, I also think this custard, Turkish custard, Turkish blend, his custard, baller. It's been it, it's been in years past my wintertime vape. And every time wintertime comes up, it's like, give me that Turk custard. You know, in fact, we have another custard on deck tonight for a very random liquid tasting. You're going to have to choose. It's between a custard and another flavor. Oh, it's going to be fun. Mmm. Yeah, dude, that's definitely it. Holy crap, that's the winner. That wins hands down. That Turk custard is delicious. This nitro vanilla porter. Well, dang, we got some social lubrication. Now the vlog's really rolling along. Now it's really rolling along. So uh, what we're going to do right now, I think I saw a few come in. Super chat. This is the only time you get the full bumper ever. Uh, yeah, had some super chats here. Appreciate that vape level midnight. Yo, yo to you, bro. Hope you're doing good. Uh, Ad Sloan, that's right. Uh, yo, yo Nick, uh, can't, can you shout out uh, all, everyone in the Cool Kids Club? Oh, all of the Cool Kids Club? Yeah, 100% of the Yo, yo Cool Kids Club are getting shouted out right now on behalf of Ad Sloan. Um, they are the greatest group of people I know. You're a keeper too. Oh, stay classy, mofo. You stay classy, mofo. You stay classy, Ad Sloan. Uh, Trey, yo, yo, Nick, yo, yo, all happy vlog day. It should be a holiday. It is in some parts of the country. Uh, it is actually a, an official holiday. There's That's not true. Level five Loki for the Han Solo desk. I tagged you in yo, yo, disc. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to put five doll. If it's the Han Solo desk. Okay, I'll have to check out this Han Solo desk. I'm not sure if I've seen that one. Lethal Coils, Merry Vlogging Christmas, Nick. Best wishes from our family to our... Oh, thank you, Lethal Coils. Best wishes from all of us to all of you, man. That's awesome. You know, I'm wearing my chainsaw tonight, my Dixon chainsaw, trying to squeeze my ever-growing ass into a medium-sized Dixon isn't as easy as it used to be. And b despite being called the chainsaw, I feel like it's the most Christmassy t-shirt, like, shirt that I own. It's red, and it... I feel Christmassy. So this is my Christmas, my Christmas flannel. Why hasn't Dixon ever done a Christmas flannel? Green, red. I'd be into it. Ugly flannel from Dixon for Christmas. Come on, man. These ideas are free, Dixon. You can have any of those. Uh, appreciate you, level five. Uh, appreciate you, lethal coils. Last one from Steve here. Just watched your best of 2015. Whoa. Awesome video. Loch Ness is doing great. Hope you and the army are doing great. Steve, we're doing great. I'm glad that you're doing great with that uh, with that Loch Ness over there. So real quickly, I just want to mention uh, a few things that I've been vaping. It honestly hasn't been much.
This is the only billet box that's really been hanging out on my desk. It's Harold. It's my OG green. The truss is on the inside. Uh, glow in the dark panels from uh, Sus, Straight Up Supply Co. Cubano, six milligram with the truss. It's been really good. I've been enjoying this more than the other ones. In fact, I was enjoying my vape snail, but the little rubber stopper to fill it up just fell completely out. And now it doesn't maintain the pressure in the tank and constantly leaks on me because the top little silicone guy, I can't get it jammed back in the hole. It's upsetting me. I cannot get it jammed back in the hole. Super upsetting me. Uh, this is another Christmassy thing I set up despite it not being actually Christmassy. It's just covered in like tattoo-y flash art kind of stuff. But it's, it's white and red and it looks Christmassy to me. That's the Crown 5 with some of that Atticus and Finch apple uh, rhubarb from last week. It's, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. It's a pretty good vape. I've closed the airflow way down on this Crown 5. Yeah, Master Hyper Sniper, you need your own golden boy. Go get one. Pretty sure I can show this now. It's the, it's the Geek Vape Aegis Boost Max Pro something. It's the one I got in trouble for showing in the little briefcase. Again, six milligram tobacco Cubano on the inside. Just a direct lung. It vapes the same as all of the other Geek Vape Aegis Boost things, which is to say uh, it vapes pretty good. Vaporesso, been using this. Got 12 milligram Turkish in it. This is the uh, 40 something, something 40, something 40. A, a, uh, no, that's not it. Something 40. Don't quite remember. They call it that because you'll be shocked by this information. It does 40 watts. Yeah, that's why 40 is in the title. It's a restricted lung. I've been kind of been using it as like a mouth to lung. It's just really bizarre. It walks that fine line between like a restricted lung and a direct lung. Like you can't, you can't really get either one really well. Um, just got this in yesterday. I don't even know what this mod is called. It's from uh, Og Vape. Og Vape, the Foxy One. Okay, so this mod is called the Foxy One. It's honestly, legitimately hyper cool. So that is the type two on top with the just try it drip tip. This is the device. This is like really, really soft suede, bro. Lux, there it is frames. That's the Lux PM40. But this, look at this suede. It's like really crazy soft, crazy soft suede. I can't imagine it's like super high quality suede, but it feels it feels like suede. And the weird thing that this device does is you pull this off and your battery's in here. 21700, it's like a C frame, but you put your battery in the C frame side of it. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. Yig is on the inside. All I know is it's been vaping great. Oh, fucking type two, of course it's vaping great. So, so. Last thing I've been vaping, well, last pleasure thing I've been vaping, Vupu has a new pod system. I hope I don't get in trouble for showing this. In fact, that's all I'm going to show you. Vupu has a new pod out, and maybe I'm maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but my 24 hours with this pod has have been the greatest pod vapes ever, ever. This pod vapes Un unbelievably, mind-blowingly good. It's hard to explain. It's hard to explain, but it vapes unbelievably good. The draw activates right away. It's got this really soft, smooth, smooth airflow on it. It's been, uh, it's been really impressive. Um, Speaking of being impressive, I've been vaping this Evolve guy for the last uh, few days now. The Reflex, their Evolve pod, the really expensive Evolve pod. And I have so many thoughts on this thing. So many thoughts. Mostly not great. And I'm sorry. Mostly not great thoughts on that. I've got a few things on my desk that are like, kind of up for review. There's this new UWell Aglios. 
you well Iglios thing. It's it's the Vinci. It's the Vupu Vinci. Um, I got I got the Gallup. You know the Horizon Tech uh, little Gallup guy. I think Matt did a review for this. Honestly, been pretty cool. Uh, still got a Chroma going. Still got some drag stuff going. Like there's like an Argus, the Drag Max, uh, this Drag S from Vupu. Uh, but it's in the midnight blue on the leather, and I think that looks really sick. It's gonna match my new phone. Perfect. Yeah, the reflux. Good Lord, I'm glad they didn't call it the reflux. But this has been good. I, I've been going back and forth between this Drag S and the Argus, and I want I lean towards the Argus every single time because of the auto draw. This Vupu Drag S doesn't have that auto draw, and I, I notice it. Like I like the auto draw a lot, and I notice that when I'm hitting this, and I let go of the button, it dies, and I go, oh yeah. That's normal. Like that's what it's supposed to do. When you let go of the button, it's supposed to stop firing. I want it to keep firing. Uh, melon punch in that. Don't really have anything else. There's like a, a miscellaneous Cali burn. There's a miscellaneous, you know, uh, Coco over here. Uh, Hitta Inc. Uh, the K Fun has been sitting here for days. There's lots of stuff getting washed uh, and the such as. But that's really more or less what I've been vaping. In fact, if I had to narrow it down to like two things, it's probably going to be this Voopoo pod. It's probably going to be this uh, Foxy Cat, whatever the hell it is from uh, Og Vape, just because I like this suede. The suede feels hyper classy, super classy. I, I vape this and I feel classier than I did before I was holding it in my hand. As soon as I just pick it up, I go, whoa, did I just get way classier? Uh, yeah, look at what's in your hand. Uh, vape's awesome. But this Vupu pod, this is the last time I'm going to mention it. Everyone is going to love this thing. I don't know if it's been on YouTube. Everyone is going to love this thing. Every review you see for this will be like, this is the Cali burn killer. This is the best pod of 2020. Everyone's going to love this thing. Everyone is. Because it vapes flawless. Holy fuck, that's good. Oh. Anyway, that's really more or less uh, what I've been vaping. I, you know, I cycle through things constantly. It doesn't mean that that's all I'm vaping. It just means that that is what's reasonable to be on my desk. I have a hexome here with nothing on it, and I got a mix here with just nothing on it. You want everything that's on my desk? All right, fine. No, I'm just kidding. I won't do that. That's like the staples. That's like the staples of what I've been vaping. So how are we doing on time? Okay. We're going to bla blaze through some news and advocacy. We're going to blaze through some mail because I'm dying to get to this retro. I'm dying to get to this retro box, you guys. This tackle box, there's stuff in here we're going to vape. Dude, there's cardamizers in here. There are mega ego cardamizers in here. There are HH357 DSE901 atomizers in here. I'm going to try to vape at least a few things, like a few really, 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 really retro things. Uh, yeah, Tom, this, it, Tom, I see you, Tom, in the chat talking about the Cali Burn G versus the OG, and I kind of agree with you, but this knocks both of them into the ground, into the ground, bro. It's a beautiful vape, beautifully smooth, beautiful vape. So what we're going to do right now, uh, didn't, I don't think I saw any more super chats come in. I'm not quite sure. Steve Ian? Ian, one super chat from Ian. Do you want to see the whole bumper just for Ian? How about just that? Okay, a little bit longer. Okay, how about just that for Ian? Yo, yo, Nick, what's the ABV of the porter? Not high. I think it was a five. Five and a half -er? Five and a half? You're really going to make me dig through my trash, Ian? Like I'm Oscar the Grouch. 5.4% tonight. 5.4% tonight. Don't worry. You know, I can get another one. I can have two beers in one vlog. That's fine. I only... I try to keep it to one beer during the vlog because I've already seen him in the chat. Poon sauce. We're going to hang out with, I'm going to hang out with my yo, yo, a cool kids club on discord after the vlog. And Poon sauce is just a peer pressure guy. And he's like, go get another beer, go get another beer, go get another beer. So I try to keep it to one beer during the vlog because I know uh Poon sauce McPeer pressure. He's going to make me drink uh, more beers than I want to tonight. But damn it. You gotta love him. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been vaping. Let's wrap this up. Let's do some news and advocacy real quick. News and advocacy, yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm going to have a few things, a few links for you down in the description. This is going to be just, you know, it's my usual suspect, my usual suspects of links down there, starting with Water Malone. <laughs> just kidding. I just love this picture so much. I want to show it as often as possible. So literally this time, starting off with Water Malone. Oh, you fell for it again. Burn can't believe you fell for that twice. I'm just kidding. Starting off with, of course, it's the Veritas cohort study. It's it's going to be there until it's done. And I'd like as many people as I can as, as possible to be involved in this. Uh, I'm also going to, in the usual suspects, nicotine. You don't know nicotine. Fantastic film. Uh, support the cause. Watch this movie. Watch it again. Watch it with your friends. Watch it with your family. Send it to your aunt and make her watch it. She just be confused. She's like, I don't smoke or vape. Why are you making me make everybody watch this movie? Uh, I'm also going to be including the Cochrane Library, the gold standard of meta analysis. Their their paper on e-cigarettes for smoking cessation is incredible, incredible evidence that we need to read and use as often as we can. Adding to the usual suspects list down below, it's the Canadian. Vaping Association. There's a Canadian Vaping Association. Uh, they are on my radar now, and I'm going to be pimping them out uh, as often as possible. There's some garbage nonsense going down in Canada. There's some garbage nonsense going down in Nova Scotia. That's why we have a Canadian Vaping Association. I am also down below going to include a link to the brand new redesigned CASA website, CASA.org. It's back and it's better than ever. And then, of course, and we're going to expand on this a little bit right now. We've been hearing about this for months, all summer long. We've been talking about this all, you know, autumn long. We've been talking about this, but it's the CASA Active Vape Mail Protect Vape Mail Call to Action on their site. It has been updated as of today, and we're going to expand a little bit on what's been going with this CASA call to action. I have mentioned this in every Tuesday Bro Newsday, in every vlog since it since its inception. Since S-1253 was passed by the Republican Senate, I've been talking about this protect the vape mail bill. I hope you guys have been calling. I hope you guys have been doing the calls to actions because we need that right now more than ever. And I know I've been a little bit optimistic about this bill saying things like, oh, well, you know, over there on govtrack.org, it's only got a 42% chance of passing, you guys. <laughs> I feel like we could easily get this taken down. That's not what's happening. The government is being the government and doing things in a little bit smarmy of a way. Campaign for tobacco-free kids being campaign for tobacco-free kids are doing things in a little bit smarmy of a way. And if there is going to be a chance to save vape mail, and I'm not talking about just, you know, vape mail from big distribution or, uh, you know, vapor DNA, getting your vapor DNA packages. Like, yes, that is, you know, on the chopping block, but it's also, it's worse than that. It's worse than that. And it's it's worse than that. Jim McDonald did a great write-up. This bill has been updated today. There's a fresh, fresh CASA call to action, okay? A fresh CASA call to action. Please go do it. I'm going to post a link right now in the chat. I'm going to post a link. This is updated as of today. I'm going to post a link down in the description. I know Addie Tooney is going to be linking to that. Um, Jim McDonald did a great piece in Vaping 360, and I'm not obviously I'm not going to sit here and read this whole thing, but I am going to read portions of it as I do generally. Uh, the House of Representatives is finally taking action on S-1253. It is known as the Preventing Online Sales of E-Cigarettes to Children Act. But instead of voting on a standalone bill, Democratic House members are attempting to insert the language into an omnibus spending bill, which guarantees that it will pass next week. So this bill doesn't have the legs to stand on its own, but they want to pass it so bad that they're just taking the language of S-1253 and inserting it into another bill that is 100% guaranteed going to pass. It's an omnibus spending bill. It's a finance bill to fund the government. No one is going to vote against this. The president is not going to veto it. It is going to pass. The vape mail ban 
at least the bill that it's being inserted into uh, is definitely going to pass. Definitely going to pass. Um, he talks about the CASA call to action. Uh, there is a pre-written message. You can make a phone call. Um, you do have to put in your phone number, but you don't actually have to make the call from what I understand. On the new CASA call to action, you have to put in your phone number, but you don't have to actually make the call. You can, can just continue on and, and send the email. But if you can make the phone call, uh, make the phone call. It is much, much worse than just a vape mail ban. Jim McDonald says, although we've been referring to this as a vape mail ban, it does much more than prevent USPS from delivering vaping product shipments. It forces private carriers to get a signature on delivery. So every vape vendor is going to have to use a private carrier, which adds more cost to both sides of the equation, and they're going to have to get a signature. So if you're used to ordering vape mail and having it be at your house when you get home from work, such is not the case anymore. You'll have to be at home to sign for your package from this private carrier. Added cost, added hassle. This bill, now this is the part that uh, is gonna be a tough pill for everybody watching. Eyes up here, I need eyes up here everybody. Eyes up here. This bill also puts vaping products into the PACT Act. Is anybody familiar with the PACT Act? Prevent All Cigarette Trafficking Act, the PACT Act. The PACT Act is a law that requires online sellers to collect state and local taxes from customers before you ship the products. Yeah, it also requires shippers of tobacco products to register with the federal government and provide detailed information monthly to the tax authority of each state it ships products to, including the names and addresses of every customer in that state that you have shipped to, and you need to prove that you charged them their state tax before you shipped their products to them. Keep a detailed log of this and provide it every month to the federal government. The punishment for not doing this, so let's just say, is Coil Turd here? Coil Turd's not here, so we he can't defend himself? <laughs> Let's just say coil turd. He's just a, you know, a one, sometimes two man operation, right? If he ships something without collecting your state and local taxes first before he ships it, if he does that and also neglects to, you know, give the federal government all uh, the federal government and the tax authority all of the information they need on, uh, you know, who he shipped the products to, including your names and, and your addresses, this isn't just like, be better next time. This is, Beecher's going to go to prison. That's what the penalty is for this. It's prison time. It is straight up prison time. So think about all of the small vendors that we order from now, right? Places like, uh, I don't know, mturk.net, uh, Vinyl and Vapor, Coil Turd, uh, Recoil RDA, uh, LucidRDA.com, Stan, uh, anything you order from Hit That Juice, Mike Vapes. Unless we do something, that's it. Not only will we not be able to get vape mail, but people are going to go out of business more so, e even more so now. This is a bipartisan bill. It's got crazy crazy bipartisan support on both sides because it has to pass. It has to pass in order to fund the government. What we're trying to do now, instead of stopping S-1253 in its tracks as a standalone bill, there has to be more nuance to it now. And that is gonna make things way, way, way more difficult because when we're doing this call to action and we're calling our representatives, we're not saying, please vote no on S-1253. Now we're saying, Please exclude the S-1253 language from the omnibus budget bill. That's a harder message to get across. We need some serious phone calls. We need some serious, serious calls to actions. This has been going on since July. It's passed, like I said, it passed the Republican Senate in July. It's moved on to the House if this language ends up in this omnibus bill, which it looks very likely, this omnibus bill will pass and the vape mail ban will go through worse than it was before. It's not just a vape mail ban. It's, oh, now vaping is part of the PACT Act. 
And if you liked being a small vendor and you liked, uh, you know, shipping out your mods and your e-liquids to your customers, uh, you should probably jump on board and, and start doing these calls to actions and start calling and calling to acting as much as you possibly can. Uh, he ends this by saying there are very few members of Congress from either party that are willing to go on record opposing legislation that makes vaping products less easily available. Any member who doesn't get flooded with emails opposing, opposing the Preventing Online Sales of E-Cigarettes to Children Act is likely to assume that it's simply a common sense law to prevent youth access to vaping products. They need to hear from vaping customers and businesses to explain how bad this law really is. I have been a, an overwhelmingly optimistic person the entire time I've been a vape advocate. You always have to want to wear the white hat. You know, you have to always want to, to get to the, the, the prime goal, the ideal goal. You have to imagine that there's a light at the end of the tunnel to keep, in order to keep you motivated to want to continue to do stuff like this. I've always been very optimistic. I've always said there's a way to do this. And look, there is a way to do this. There is a way to do this. When I got texted this article today by Danielle and I read it, it just stopped me dead in my tracks. <laughs> it stopped me dead in my tracks. And for the first time in 11 years, I went, holy fuck, fuck. I sat through the first deeming regulations and thought we can fight this. And I sat through the second deeming regulations and I fight this. The great thing is now we don't even need the deeming, the deeming regulations because nobody will be able to buy vape stuff anyway. And all of our friends will be out of business. So I'm going to put a link, probably the most important link in the entire vlog down in the description to do this CASA call to action, phone call, mail, snail mail, call to action, fucking repeat this s1253 language has to be removed from this omnibus bill and if it doesn't if it doesn't then look we'll deal with the repercussions of that and continue fighting and move forward uh, science and vaping have to win at the end of the day i refuse to let uh short-sighted knee-jerk reacting politicians uh take this away from smokers i refuse please do the call to action. That's just where I'm going to leave it. I'll leave the Jim McDonald down in the description and I'll leave the call to action down in the description. Just please. <laughs> I, I've, I've never begged. I've never begged. I'm begging. I'm begging. I've never begged. I'm begging. It's happening. Here's the thing, foofless rucker. You're not just whistling Dixie, man. It's not just fire up the black market. It's we will be the black market. We will be not even gray market. We will be drug dealers. We will be black market, burner phones if you want to buy e-liquid, could face prison time, black market. Please do the CASA call to action down in the description below. Now, moving on from that, I'm going to try to get you in a better mood, okay? I promise. I'm going to try to get you in a better mood. You want to hydrate real quick? <laughs> Let's stay hydrated, hydro homies. Let's stay hydrated. Where'd my damn bumper go? News and advocacy, yeah. I guess that works too. That's fine. We can watch the news and advocacy bumper one more time. I meant to show you Kent. Doesn't much matter anymore. So exactly right. Hashtag Danielle hashtag melt the phones, hashtag melt the phones, melt their computers. I mean, look, this can, this can be done. This can be done. And even if you're not hopeful, just begrudgingly do it. Just do the call to action and constantly, constantly do it. You know, constantly, constantly do it as a, as a per on a personal note, as a libertarian, I'm used to being let down because I always vote my hopes. I always go for the goal, but a libertarian never wins. And even though, you know, a libertarian's not going to win this year, you still have to do it. You have to, you have to stay the course. 
You have to do the call to action. You got to vote your hopes. You have to do it. And then you never know. You might be pleasantly surprised at the end. You never know. Look, things change so quickly uh, in the vape world. It's ridiculous. So here we go. Don't even have a watch on. Let's move on past that because I had something else I wanted to share with you. Um, I got more homework for you. If you're in the United States, there is a new survey going on. Let's see, it's over on this side. Vape USA Consumer Survey. This is being put together by eSig Intelligence. Welcome to the 2020 eSig Intelligence Annual Vape Consumer Survey. They do these every year, and I'll have a link down in the description. Um, the purpose of this survey is to study how and why people use electronic cigarettes. This survey is done in conjunction with CASA, and the results will be used to ensure that stakeholders and policymakers have a clear understanding of the current behavior of vapors. The survey is completely anonymous and should take no more than 10 minutes to complete. If you got an extra 10 minutes, right after you're done doing that CASA call to action, jam on this consumer vape survey if you're in the United States. Now, if you are abroad, and I mean in the EU, UK area, and uh, look, last week on Tuesday, Bro Tuesday, someone in the comments was giving me a hard time about calling the UK the EU. I didn't I didn't call the UK the EU. I know that the UK and the EU are two, two, two different you know places, this survey is for both of them. If you're in the UK, this survey is for you. If you're in the EU, this survey is for you. But this is the EU nicotine user survey. So we went into a little bit more on this in the last Tuesday Road Tuesday, but what the, the basic idea behind this is the, the, the TPD is up for renewal. The, the TPD is getting re-evaluated. And with the TPD getting re-evaluated, we want to have, I mean, I say we like I'm a part of this. I say we simply because I'm a vapor uh, and I'm a vapor and that's that. I guess that makes me part of this. Ethra, the European Tobacco Harm Reduction Association, they want voices of consumers uh, to be a part of the TPD re-evaluation. So if you're in Europe or the UK, either one, I know they're different places, but either one, you can do this survey. Just do the EU nicotine user survey. That's the last of the homework, I promise. I promise. I'm gonna put a link down in the description to the EU nicotine user survey, and uh, I will be mentioning it at least uh, 1,500 times between now and the end of the year, maybe more. Maybe more than that. So uh, I guess go, moving on from there, there was just a, a couple more things I wanted to share real quick. One of them is this sweet burp that's about to happen. Yeah. Good. Good job. Um, a couple more things I wanted to share. I got some science, but I also have this. Now, I have been threatening to read this on multiple live streams, and damn it, today it's finally happening. Phil! Phil! Thank you for being here, Phil. Appreciate you finally catching alive. You know what I say, Phil? It's about damn time. <laughs> just kidding, bro. I'm just kidding. I'm, 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 I'm happy to see you here, Phil. So uh, this comes to us from the American Council for Science and Health. This was written by Dr. Alex Brizow. PhD. He's a microbiologist, but the big headline on it says CDC misleads by calling e-cigarettes a tobacco product. Now, I know that the S-1253 omnibus spending bill kind of all put us in a little bit of a bummer of a mood. This is what I'm hoping will, uh, you know, give, give us a little bit of energy, right? Give us a little bit of energy. This is great. The CDC misleads people by calling e-cigarettes a tobacco product. This is something we've known. This is something that Alex Brizo knows. knows and I'm just going to quickly read this entire thing because it's real short and really good. The CDC is one of the finest public health institutions on the planet. Yeah, because they fearlessly march into hot zones to battle deadly infectious diseases. We microbiologists think of all of the good folks at the CDC as real life superheroes but not everything the CDC does is equally praiseworthy as Dr. Josh Bloom explains. Their portrayal of the opioid crisis has been unhelpful at best and lethal at worst. Their insistence 
on restricting prescription opioid files in the face of the overwhelming evidence that the overdose deaths are largely due to the recreational use of fentanyl-laced heroin. The CDC has also gone on a bizarre crusade against e-cigarettes. Vaping, not completely safe. True, vaping is not completely safe, and it should only be used by smokers as a quitting device, which I don't necessarily agree with. Recreational use should be discouraged, which I don't necessarily agree with. And policies should be in place to prevent them from falling into the hands of teenagers. Yes, I agree with that. But the exaggerated hype and fear surrounding e-cigarettes runs the very real risk of undermining a valuable public health tool. Consider the CDC's last report, latest report rather. It says that tobacco use by youth is rising. If that's true, that's horrible. But as shown, it's not true. The CDC basically admits as much when it says e-cigarettes are the main reason. This is very important to understand. E-cigarettes and other vaping devices do not contain tobacco, period. They are not tobacco products, even though the government apparently considers them to be tobacco products. What these products do contain is nicotine. Nicotine can either be extracted from tobacco or made synthetically in a laboratory, but regardless of the process, the only thing that matters is the end product. In this case, the end product is a solution of nicotine, not tobacco. It is disingenuous to pretend otherwise. E-cigarettes are not a gateway to actual cigarettes. Another myth that regularly circulates is that e-cigarettes are a gateway right, to actual cigarettes. A charitable view is that the CDC has done nothing to dispel this myth. An uncharitable view is that the CDC is actively encouraging it. Yet the CDC's own data shows that this is not true. It's plain as day. Among middle and high school students, e-cigarette use is up, but cigarette use is down. This graph depicts data for high school students. If vaping was a gateway to smoking, then cigarette use wouldn't be falling. Not all bad things are equally bad. In an ideal world, kids aren't tempted to rebel and don't do anything stupid, but we don't live in that world. So it's not helpful to pretend that all bad things are equally bad. Marijuana is bad but not as bad as heroin or cocaine. Getting drunk and losing control is bad, but not as bad as drinking and driving. Protected sex among teenagers is bad, but not as bad as unprotected sex. Likewise, vaping by non-smokers for fun is bad, but not as bad as smoking cigarettes. That message is so important, yet the CDC keeps fumbling it. Look, uh, I, I don't know what to tell you, Alex. I wish the CDC wasn't fumbling it, but they are. And it kind of makes you wonder, like, hmm, is the CDC, I mean, clearly they're fumbling it, but, you know, is it is it accidental? Like, I mean, is it accidental? We hear from the CDC constantly that, vaping is a gateway to smoking, even though the data says actually the complete opposite of it. Are they fumbling it accidentally? That's the only question I have. They're clearly fumbling it, but is that fumblingness accidental? Anyway, uh, I thought this was a really great uh, little write-up. Uh, I, I agree. I agree with you, Alex, and the American Council on Science and Health, promoting science and debunking junk since 1978. I definitely agree with you. So I'm going to put this link in the chat right now. I'm going to have that link down in the description uh, below as well. Now, I think, hang on. That's it. I think that's all I got for news and advocacy tonight, you guys. So yeah. I'll have links uh, for everything, literally everything that I talked about down in the description below, including top link, the, the link, the main link that everybody needs. It's the CASA call to action for vape mail. It's bad. It's really not a good thing. Uh, and uh, like I said, I've, I've never begged before. Just not in my nature to beg. I'm begging you. Do this call to action. 
make the phone call, do the call to action. Otherwise, this little thing that we uh, knew as vaping, Mike Bloomberg gets it. <laughs> and I refuse to let that happen. So I'll have links down in the description to everything I've been talking about. Um, uh, I kind of wanted to talk about this. Maybe we'll save it for Tuesday Bro News Day. The UK, you guys in the UK need to be real, real careful. Real, real careful. Uh, Bloomberg Philanthropies aren't just in the United States squashing science and vaping and tobacco harm reduction. They aren't just in New Zealand and Australia squash. They aren't just in the Philippines. They aren't just in Armenia. Bloomberg Philanthropies have been cozying up to the United Kingdom just as a heads up. <laughs> just as a heads up, UK. Bloomberg's coming. <laughs> Oh, Bloomberg is coming. But what do you do? You fight. You discredit the myth-making machine. You fight the man. So let's move on a little bit there from the news and advocacy. Like I said, I'll have links all over the place down in that description. And what we're going to do now before we get to opening any mail, I don't know if there were any super chats, but I'm going to check. Oh, okay, that's fine. Don't, don't do the bumper then. Huh. That's all you get. Sorry, you get no more. Okay, yeah, that's it. Ian, yo, yo, Nick, what's the ABV of the port? Okay, that's it. Last of the super chats, good. Okay, now what we're gonna do, I think you know what time it is. I got some mail. I'm gonna try to run and get it and get a garbage bag and get back here in time uh, before the end of the vape mail bumper. Uh, one, two, three, go. Not even close, bro. Not even close. Hang on. Uh... Uh... Oh, all right. Yeah, there we go. Got some mail. Got some mail to open up today. There's a package from Turk. In there, there's a package from Omboy OC in there. Don't know what Dwayne sent over, but something from Dwayne in there. All right, I don't want to ruin this shirt. Let's get it back on the, get you back on a hanger soon. All right. Boosh, there you go. All right. Well, hi, you guys. Welcome back to the vlog. I'm out of breath just from sprinting across the hallway. Unbelievable. All right, let me get out a knife. Um, this package is already opened, okay? I'm not gonna lie and pretend that I didn't open this package, but this was technically my order. I ordered uh, I ordered a bunch of, uh, oh shit, Turk. All right, I, I ordered a bunch of uh, uh, pumpkin. I, got, I, I ordered some 120s of Turk's pumpkin and they showed up, so I tore open the package, but he sent, Yo, yo, $2 sales, you guys. I got a bunch of pumpkin and it's all, in fact, I have $2 boxes lining this wall over here, you guys, lining pumpkin. Pumpkin courtesy of Turk. Can't get enough of that pumpkin. We're gonna open some mail here. This one uh, feels coils. Feels like coils to me. Feels like coils. Oh. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Uh, I got a QP violator. There are some coils in here. I got a QP violator, RTA. I am, uh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Okay, I don't wanna go through this whole thing right now. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, so much airflow. Crazy airflow. Can you even adjust this airflow? All right, I don't have time to get into the violator right now, but hee <laughs> hee, violator, dude. I'm excited about this. Uh, big fan of QP, like the violator. 
don't care about that. Um, got another package here. Now this could be, this looks very non-informal, I should say, very informal package. Um, how does the bill affect those that DIY? Oh, are you talking about the S1253? Um, you, I, I legitimately don't know. You could probably get flavorings delivered. Um, anybody that ships nicotine uh, is going to have to jump through, go through the whole song and dance of registering and uh, taxes and uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Who's this from? This is a Christmas gift. Um, might make nicotine hard to get. Uh, I don't know. If you buy in bulk, maybe not. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I know that you, I mean, so you won't, you just won't have anything to vape it on. You'll have plenty of DIY. You just won't be able to buy any hardware. Hardware is a, a tobacco product. I'm pretty sure the vape mail ban covers hardware and not just e-liquid. Who sent this to me? There's no return address on this. This looks like a Christmas gift. This looks like a Christmas gift. Um, <laughs> oh, holy shit. Okay, so the first thing is I have a sweet coaster for my desk now. Yeah. <laughs> Who is this from? Who is this from? There's no return address. Who recognizes this? Who recognizes it's time to party? Okay. I didn't want the tape to ruin it. Who is this? Who did this to me? Who's, who's time to party? Is it time to party? Yeah, I thought that would be funny. Who did this? Because there's also uh, a Mandalorian Pez dispenser. That's amazing. And what appear to be tiny... There's Star Wars... Oh, wait, there's a note. Okay, okay. Okay, Frank... Damn it, Frank. I was so confused. Hey, <laughs> hey, Grim. Uh, I've heard you talk about wanting these flavors. Oh, wanting these flavors on the podcast. I didn't have enough time to dial in the cornflake cookie, but the banana coffee cake is pretty good. And the coils are from my buddy Trey. He made the aliens for the type 2 RTA. Try them out. Thanks for everything. Frank. Frank. The juices are just something I made on a whim. Uh, I'll have to send you some recipes if I actually get them fully developed. Frank, look at the tiny little, look at the tiny little Christmas stockings that are R2-D2 and a Stormtrooper. I like, do I have to have kids now? Is this a thing? Just because I have these? I got, there's, look, there's Mandalorian socks. Hi, happy Christmas. Happy fucking Christmas, Frank. Okay. Framed staples. All right. I like the I like the the labels for the coils. You don't usually get that you know specialized of a label for your coils, but that's uh that's next level. That is straight up uh, next level. Yeah. The, okay. So that means these are the aliens. All right. Hang on. I'm gonna leave this in here. There's e liquid. There is. Oh, that's right. We traded the we traded. And this is a rig, the rig V2 in green. Sick. I think I got the good end of that trade. Got a rig V2 with snake skin green on it. That's sick. Sick. Sick boy. Na, 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 sick boy. Well, fucking A, thank you. Damn it, thank you, Frank. I wanna rip open that Pez and eat it right now so bad, Frank. So bad. Okay. All right. See, this one also looks really informal. Did I put my knife away? Why do I do that every time? Why do I put the knife away in between every package? QP, you're here. Did you see what I got? Dude, I got a violator. I got a QP violator RTA. QP, QP, QP. Did you see this? Look at that. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool, right? Oh, wait, 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 QP, QP, QP. Did you see this? 
I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just kidding. Um, let's open this. I don't know where it's from. It looks to be... Whoa. I literally almost just stabbed myself in the chest. You didn't want to see the vape mail bumper again? Why not? I don't want to cut myself open, man. Just don't. This, I think this is from uh, somewhere far off lands. United Kingdom, the Europe maybe, and the such as. P.S. I cleaned everything. Oh, some literature here. Let's, uh, let's just dive right into this, shall we? All right. Uh, Daniel, two trips. Where are you at, Daniel? Two trips. My apologies for my handwriting, but feel free to read this on the vlog if you can. Dude, you have good handwriting. I have been a longtime fan. Uh, we met once in London. There was an awkward situation with a wheelchair, and you gave me a hug, and I said you smelled nice. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's my favorite subscriber interaction story of all time. There was an awkward situation with a wheelchair. You gave me a hug and I told you you smelled nice. <sighs> Holy shit. This is funny. Uh, thanks for all you do in keeping me off the smokes. I have thrown in a few extras and my favorite beer here from the UK. It's brewed in Scotland. Hopefully it gets to you in good order. Sending my love to you and your family. Hope your father is doing well. Peace. Merry Christmas, Daniel. Two trips, 86. Bro. Uh, bro, thank you. That <laughs> I love that. Let's see what's in here. Oh, shut up, bro. Death Star ice mold? That's cool as shit. What, are you kidding me? Drink some bourbon with some, with some Death Stars floating in it. Some Death Stars floating in it. All right. Wait, 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 wait. What's this? Rose? What is, what is, what, what, what do you got going on over here? What, what, what is this? <laughs> the world's strongest tape? Holy crap on a crutch, bro. Ah. Oh. Oh. Oh, I know what that is. Holy shit, I've never had one of these before. Bro, Daniel Two Trips. Are you sure you want to send me this? Are you sure? All right, look. That's cool as shit. Yes. Haku Phenom? You sent me three RDAs? Holy shit, bro. Thank you. That's unbelievable. The Salix? The Salix? The Salix? It looks to be like a little squonky, like flavor banger guy. Shit. I don't know if I've heard of this. Dude, Daniel Two Chips 86. Thank you so much, bro. What beer is this? Holy crap. You're too, that's too kind. You are too kind. All right, let's not pull a British eyes and, and you know destroy the beer on camera this is your favorite uk beer embrace the opaque og see brood this looks exactly like what i'm going to be into og hazy new england ipa a new england ipa from scotland what that is crazy uh thank you daniel two trips 86 that's very super cool of you bro hell yeah Thank you for that. Um, th okay, yeah, all I have left is Dwayne and this one. Um, I think, I think, uh huh. Yes. Oh, yes. See, there's some people, there's some people in my life that are just way too nice to me, way too kind to me. Eric, Vinyl and Vapor, I think I saw you in the chat. Uh, you're one of those people. I got uh, just the lion's share of some, uh, some deep cuts. Fucking deep cuts. I got finally... Oh, yeah, I got some 3 milligram PB party. Oh, thank you. Ooh, 18s deep cuts. 18s. Okay, there's a 12 PB. And... I have some sus, some sus liquids, crypto vape, straight up e-liquid, straight up cake. 
Straight up cake. You ever had straight up cape? Cake, MGMT. Wait, there's some, there's, there's billet box things in here. There's straight up supply co things in here. Oh, oh shit. Uh, diamond panels and a diamond, uh, you know, like a, uh, that shape switch instead of the round shape. It's like a, you know, a hexagon. What is that? That's not a hexagon. That's a square, except it's not really a square. It's a diamond. I'm just going to say it's a diamond. Just going to, just going to say it's a diamond. Fucking straight up supply co. All right. And a t-shirt. This is, oh, straight up supply co t-shirt. All right. That's kind of cool. I like straight up supply co. They've got some cool shit. Thanks, Eric. You know, I was I keep I was gonna buy a bunch of uh Hey Hey look at that I got a little pin. Look at that Eric. Look at that. I got Eric's pin there. Hey, you think you're better than me. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric, final and vapor. And look, I'm not gonna be a dragon about all this. I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna spread the love around. Last mail, the last mail, Violator, you guys. Violator RTA. I'm really excited about that. Let's see what Dwayne has in store for me. Always cut towards yourself in a, you know, sudden jerking motion. At least that's the best way that I've found to use a knife. All right, now the knife can actually go away. What else? Oh, Dwayne. Okay, so we got some yo-yo stuff to give away. Because <laughs> I have some of these, and that's even more. Oh, I got that Lost Vape Ursa. Oh, sick. Uh, he told me that Lost Vape was sending this to him to send to me. Anybody tried that Ursa, that Lost Vape Ursa? I saw someone rocking this with the Type 2 on top. It looks super dope. What up to you, Jerry? What up, Jerry? Jerry. What, what, Jerry? What, what? And, uh, you know, some liquids. I got some uh, some more 12 milligram icy mango. Ooh, some 12 milligram icy melon punch and some 12 milligram icy punch. I really want to try this icy melon punch in like an MTL, like a mouth to lung banger. wonder if it's any good. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, not bad. Have you guys seen this pod system? Who's done a review for this? The Magma, Magma, the Magma AIO. It's this flat, hang on, I don't need to open a new one. It's one of these guys. It's like this flat little weird credit card guy. It reminds me of like the old iPhones with that bezel on there. It's like, it's not bad. It's not great. I don't like enjoy it. It's good in the sense that it will vape, but it's not great in the sense that I don't super enjoy it. Damn it, I kind of wanted to take a look at this Ursa real quick. Uh, no, nah, okay. Yeah, definitely don't have time. Definitely don't have time for that nonsense. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Maybe I'll leave the Ursa out just for like a second, you know. What's it gonna hurt? What's it gonna hurt? I've got a pile of stuff to clean up. There's another lost vape. Oh, these are all coil heads. All right. You know, my office just is shrinking every single day. I don't have enough room to keep anything anywhere. I don't have enough room to keep anything anywhere. I'm just completely overwhelmed 24-7. And I look over here and I go, yo, you guys have no homes. You guys have nowhere to go. Oh, wow. It's way bigger than I thought it would be. Holy crap, that's gigantic. Why do why do companies do this? Why? Why do they do this? You can't there's no you're not picking this out of here. The only way to get this out is to take this whole fucking thing out and press it from the back. Wow, that's way bigger than I thought it was. Holy crap. That's huge. This better be a 21700. That is ginormous. Okay, it is a 21700. Wow, it's way bigger than I thought it was. 
Uh, it it's way bigger than I thought it was. I mean, even comparing it to the Drag S, it's like a fraction of the size. Oh uh, yeah. Well, they took some design cues from Vupu. I mean, that airflow. Come on, that's high. The, very similar. I mean, even the airflow adjustment, the tank, the cutout. Very, very similar, Lost Vape. I never get to vape during the vlog. You guys get to just sit and vape your face off all you want. <laughs> and poor Nick doesn't get to vape for two hours. I'm just kidding. I do a bunch of vaping at the end. I turn it to a, you know, cloud comp in here. All right, well, sick. Well, that was it. That's mail. That's mail. And next week, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna write to Daniel two trips. Should I write it in like a code? No, let's see. This is from Daniel. Two trip. Whoops. I wrote Daniel two frip. You cool with that, Daniel Two Trips eighty six? You're gonna be Daniel Two Frip. That's fine. You know what? That's just a, that's just a little secret just between you and me. That's it. Nobody else in the world needs to know about that. Who else needs to know about that? All right. Well, uh, shit. Yeah, that's the end of the that's the end of the mail. That's all the mail that I got. Got some good stuff. Uh, really excited about that violator. I mean, I guess I'm excited about the lost vape thing too. But really, I'm excited about the Star Wars Death Star Ice Sphere. Violator, violator, bro. Anyway, let's gonna wrap that on up. Let's do, uh, were there any super chats that came in? I didn't see. Let's do a couple of them. That's all you get. When it flashes to a black screen, that's how you know we're, it's time for it's super chat time. Uh, Jake. Nope. Oh, wow, I'm way behind. Uh, Barbara, that's very gracious of you. If you don't vape but are a friend slash loved one of a vapor, do the call to action. Added a blurb at the end of mine saying, I want my family protected. Barbara, yes. Yes, brilliant. If you're a non-smoker, non-vapor, still do it. Get your non-smoking, non-vaping friends and family to do it as well because they know you and you quit cigarettes by smoking. I mean, not you directly, Barbara, but you the royal you, the watcher of the vlog. I don't know. Maybe you didn't all quit. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, Tom. Nope. Jake, now you have a Death Star ice cube to go with your Stormtrooper bourbon. Yes. Holy shit. I would never, I'm not going to put anything in the Stormtrooper though. The glass Stormtrooper stays empty all the time. Uh, Tom, that's very gracious of you. Cut towards your body. Nope. Cut towards your buddy, not towards your thumb. Always get another buddy. Can't get another thumb. That's Tom. Wow. Serious. That's good. That hits hard. That cuts deep. Cuts deep. Get it? Cut. Never mind. Southern Comfort. Did you get my email? I just bought the violator. I did not get your email. I mean, I'm sure I got it. I don't think I have read it yet, but I just myself got a violator. Southern Comfort. Did you see that? Violator. Violator, dude. I'm stoked about it. Maybe we'll do a build stream for the violator. No, I have build stream plans. Damn it. All right. That's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll squeak the violator in there somewhere, but that is another round of super chattens. And so, holy shit. Is it time? It's 5:45. We have 45 minutes. I might, this might be the rest of the vlog. Just fair warning, fair warning. All right, everybody, hang on. Woo! Too big to even fit on the GD desk. Would you look at that? How am I gonna adjust my microphone? That works? That doesn't really work. I'm completely out of focus. All right. Um, so this tackle box, let me move my keyboard over there all right oh shit um so this tackle box weighs two thousand pounds two thousand pounds it is 
as old as I am, uh, it it has a, a King's Ransom in random old vape gear in it. It's actually not as old as I am. I bought this. This was the third tackle box that I bought when I started vaping. Now, when I first started vaping, there mods didn't exist. The, there weren't there weren't mods. All you were really buying frequently was stick batteries and little atomizers and Back in the day on ECF, man, everyone just said, get a tackle box, get a tackle box, dude. They're the best way. Hey, keep all your vape stuff. You can get, you know, you keep all your atomizers in there. You can keep your liquids in there. Keep everything in a tackle box. And that's what I did. I went out and bought a tackle box. And the first tackle box I had was just this little tiny blue guy. It looked like a little, uh, uh, what are those fucking, like a little caboodle, you know, like one little latch on the front and you open it like a clamshell. And then there's like one little tray. And that's where I kept all all my vape gear that I had at that time, I kept in the tiny little, tiny little tackle box. Well, that tackle box got upgraded to a slightly larger tackle box. And then finally that tackle box got upgraded to the current tackle box that you see in front of you. This happened over the course of probably a a year and a half, maybe two years, maybe two years. Sorry, I'm just trying to get some vaps in. And this tackle box, I bought it for a few reasons. It's got, this is going to be impossible to show you guys. It's got this compartment over here, big, big, deep compartment for big bottles of e-liquid. I'll show you what's in there in a second. It's got this little guy. Oh, you can't see it. All right. It's got a little door down here as well that had like slide in trays. And then it has this with like all of these slidey out trays that I kept all sorts of nonsense in. Oh, shit. Oh. Well, something's broken in there. Something's keeping it from closing. All right. Well, this should be fun. Ah! <laughs> Why won't you close? Yeah! All right. Okay, well... I broke my tackle box. I may never be able to close it again or fit it in my closet, but that doesn't matter because we're retro vaping. And we're gonna start at the top. Ooh, that is broken. Holy shit. Something uh, must have fallen back there and I don't have time to get it out. Like I... And the great thing is n nothing really ever fit really well in the tackle box. All right. I cannot believe I've had this tackle box for a fucking decade. I open it once on video breaks this. It's been working fine. Open it once on video and it breaks. So it has this compartment right here. See all these little, you can kind of see all these little troughs right here. Now up here are actually some RDAs. This is a Stellaire. Just got tossed in there. It's a Stellaire from 2014, I think, was when the Stellaire really hit it. 2014 was the Stellaire. I got a, I got a, I got a Stellaire in there. There is some other random RDAs in here. This Asmodus monster, the Asmodus 26. Anybody ever try the Asmodus 26? Ugh. Boosh. There's the deck. There was a time in vaping when people would just release anything just to see if it would if it would sell, you know? And if it didn't sell, it was like, all right, no love lost. Didn't it didn't cost us that much. Whoa. I have no idea what this is or what this goes to. Some sort of hybrid RDA. I don't know what it hybrids down to, though. That's the problem. Yeah, uh, there's a tugboat in here. This. Oh no, this isn't the one I was thinking of. I used to really like this one. Made in the USA, the OTO, Auto Industries. This is when RDAs were made in the USA and they were like, you know, $300 because they were made in the USA. Um, I, oh, we're going to... Oh, no. I found my favorite cartomizers, but I don't have a battery to put them on. Shit. Shit. Um, 
There are other just random RDAs in here. I have a second, I have two, in my tackle box, what are the odds of me having two Asmodus 26 millimeter atomizers? That is the dumbest shit ever. I got a Doge in here. I think this is a Doge V1. Anybody ever use the Doge? I never really liked this atomizer. It's still got twisted wire in there. Holy shit, all right, well. Hi, we'll keep that out for a future retro vaping, why not? Of course we will. There is... Nope, the Love RDA. Anybody, uh, anybody hip to the Love RDA? Literally just says Love RDA on the bottom. I don't remember this, I don't remember what it's from. I know, Amanda M. What up, Tugboat? Amanda M. and the What Up Tugboat. I also have some Cardo tanks in here. There's some Cardo tanks sitting at the top. These are glass. These are glass. And this one uh, says Grim on it. I did some like custom uh, glass work. My font is etched on there. And this was a Cardomizer tank. And the idea is, again, here you take this Cardomizer. Look, even a pre-punched Cardo. Pre-punched Cardo with holes in it slides in there you have a reservoir of juice that'll you know it'll soak in through the little holes in the cardomizer and then you vaporize it this is basically i mean a cardo tank is what became fucking every coil head based sub ohm tank this design but you know in 2009 you had to construct it yourself cardo tanks is it aluminum or plastic? Uh, obviously, I got 510 cardamizers coming out of my face. 510 cardamizer. Uh, this would fit on an Ego battery. This was like a mega cardamizer. If I can find an Ego battery in here, I'm going to try this mega cardamizer out. These were from Vapor for Life, and they were blank cardamizers for their e-cigars. And... I love the way these vape, but I don't think I have a Vapor for Life e-cigar battery to put them on. And that kind of really bums me out. Now, okay, there's some really old 18650s and stuff back here too. But now, here, I'm going to get this out. Oh, shit. What is that, a toad? All right, let's put the Stellaire back. I'm going to put these RDAs back over here. Uh, nope, we didn't go there. You went here, nah, nah, nah. you go there, nah, 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 nah. there's a few things. It's like, here, that this is definitely a future retro vape right there. Now, can anybody, can anybody guess me what this tank is called? Who's old school enough to remember this tank? I'm going to leave it up on the screen till somebody gets it, which means I'll be holding this for 30 seconds. Oh, yeah, those were the days, Disco Potato. Remember when you just grab your Cardo tank and then you just get a pocket full of liquid? <laughs> or a, you know, a, a car holder, cup holder full of liquid? Yeah, that was for the Vapor Zeus. This, I'll give you a hint. Uh, I won't give you a hint. Nobody's going to get this. Nobody's going to get this. I, I, it sucks having to wait for the... Uh, now put the box box back in alphabetical order. It sucks having to wait for the uh, J the, the the lag to catch up. Nope, not a J tank. One guess, one guess, Stefan. The Air Plus. Nope, not a map, but very close. Not a wave. Not a map. Nope. Oh, sorry, it's out of focus again. No, it's not a map. It's definitely not a map. You're so close though. It's almost these those same letters. What's up, Crazy Roach? The gem, nope, Donnie, it's not a gem. This is a historic, historic piece of vaping. Historic. That's the bulk V2, definitely not. Definitely not a Kanger, definitely not a Big Daddy, definitely nothing from tobacco. This was uh, manufactured in the United States, I believe, at the time. This was from a company called Avid Vapor, and this was the AMP tank. A-M-P tank. And the idea behind the amp tank was thusly. Oh, shit. I thought I had a 510 atomizer in here. Oh, I do. So the idea was thusly. All right, that drip tip's never coming out of there. My, one of my favorite drip tips is perma-sealed to an HH357 atomizer. Nope. 
amp tank. And so the idea was that you could put this atomizer inside the tank like this, and then it screwed down into the bottom like this, and it sealed on there like this, and you adjusted the juice flow so that it acted like a squonker kind of, it acted like a really slow squonker. Like it would slowly be feeding the bottom of your atomizer liquid and then you can vape it and vape it and vape it. And then it'll slowly feed your atomizer liquid. And occasionally what would happen is if you didn't have this adjusted correctly, the airflow was this like little ring on the bottom. You'd have to cover up the airflow hole and do one of those like, like you do a big drag and then you let your finger off and you'll see a big bubble come out. It's like big bubble and then your atomizer's flooded. These were expensive and a pain in the ass to use, uh, but I used them constantly. This was another tank that if you grabbed it by the tank out of your pocket, it was like, hi, pocket full of juice. Oh, you didn't want a pocket full of juice? Then you shouldn't have been using the amp tank. Keeping a cartomizer out, keeping this out. Uh, HH357, now this is gonna be a legendary atomizer to anybody that was around and like, 2011, 2012, maybe even into 2013. But once upon a time, these were the only atomizers we had. They were 510 threaded. And if I could get this drip tip out of here, I would show you the inside, but it's just a coil. It's just a coil. It's a nichrome coil, round wire, sitting in a little ceramic cup with some silica wick through the middle of it. That was what we used for atomizers. And then, this wasn't the first rebuildable atomizer, but this was one of the first. I think I've even retro vaped this at some point. Uh, it's the Phoenix. This is the Phoenix rebuildable atomizer. And if I could unscrew this, I could show you the deck on the inside, but it was just this weird, you know, this is like the infancy of RDAs. It's like one of the first RDAs that has ever existed. And of course, I'm not gonna be able to get this off. It was just a little two post, no holes in the post holes, just posts with screws on top. So you had to like wrap your leads around the screws, mouth to lung even, just a little pinhole on the side of it. First, uh, first rebuildable atomizers. All right, so I'm keeping, this is a DSE 901 atomizer. Holy shit, still works. Oh, this is a low res DSE 901. If I had some stick batteries, we could attach some DSE 901s to some stick batteries. But for all intents and purposes, this is the atomizer that got me off of traditional combustible tobacco cigarettes. I bought a 901 kit with a spare atomizer and a spare battery. Uh, sh this gal that I bought them from, uh, she sold e-liquid as well. So I bought a bunch of tobacco e-liquid. She was not a big vendor. This was like, she had just like switched to her own site after selling on eBay for like a few months. And now it's like, it was some woman, she was like Cindy's hometown custom vapes or something like that. Small little audience, small orders. And she was nice enough to replace my atomizer that was burnt out. And she's like, yeah, you know, these come from China. So they, they do burn out a lot. She's like, I'll replace this one though. You know, she was very great about it. I will give you a uh, hundred dollars. I will give you a hundred dollars if you can tell me what this is. <laughs> no one's gonna get it. No one's gonna get it. Not offers off the table. Drip shield. You want to know how a drip shield works? So the idea was on a DSE 901 atomizer. There's a female thread at the bottom. Inner threads on the bottom and that goes on to outer threads on your battery so it's the reverse of a 510 and the airflow comes from this tiny little hole in the side you see this tiny little hole right there well that tiny little hole oh what a good draw that's where all your airflow comes from so when you're leak so when your atomizer is leaking night that's where your liquid comes out of but unless unless you have a drip shield. And all this is, is a piece of aluminum with two O-rings at the top and bottom on the inside 
that form a little seal around your atomizer and you push the bottom O-ring below that airflow, boop, like that. And now if you leaks, it's not gonna leak into your battery. It's gonna be contained in the drip shield. And there was an airflow cut into the drip shield. These drip shields were like, I don't like eight, nine bucks a pop. They would sell these for those first few vape meats. It was crazy. I mean, the technology just, I mean, it almost made no sense. <laughs> drip shields. Yeah. Drip shields, Ashton. Here's a clearomizer. If anybody's never seen a clearomizer before, this is the joy that we got to deal with throughout all of 2012 and some of 2013. If I can find an ego battery, we're going to be seriously vaping some stuff. Seriously vaping some stuff. Now, there's also, you see why I might have to switch, do this in two parts? There's also this thing here, because I this is something I don't want to rush, because I actually want to enjoy everything that's in here and like really remember what it was like from forever ago. So this appears to be all cardamizers. I stocked up on cardamizers. My favorites were the Icon Vapes, Icon Vapes low resistance uh, mega cardamizers. Mega, they were he called them like the Mega Punch. I still have two in here. Yeah, the Mega Punch atomizers. They were. 901? Shit, these were 901 atomizers, cartomizers rather. 901 cartomizers, pre-punched, so you could just fill up a cardo tank, saturate your uh, cartomizer, and vape it. And it worked. Like, dude, it worked. Cardo tanks, when I first started vaping cardo tanks, I, I know I've said this before, I thought, this is it. This is all I'm ever gonna vape is cardo tanks. So these are mostly blank cartomizers. I, that doesn't stay up on its own anymore. Yeah, full packs of clear of uh, of cartomizers in here. Some vapor for life cartomizers. Now these are the Bogue cartomizers, and if anybody remembers Bogue and Bogue Gate, yeah, Bogues, Bogues, the two ohm Bogues were the good Bogues, and the Bogues went through a bad. A bad batch. They had like a few bad batches and it was all anybody could talk about on ECF at that time. Whoa, Bogue Gate. That's all anybody could talk about. And there were threads after threads of like, well, my Bogue atomizers have this number, you know, on the serial number manufacture date and they don't work. And someone else will say, well, I got some Bogues from this batch with this serial number, you know, and this date. And I find that they're working perfectly. And we narrowed it down like through our own investigation discovery, you know, fucking hunting the Golden State Killer. We narrowed it down to like the certain date range that while Bogue was manufacturing cartomizers, they weren't good. Like we did this investigatory work on our own. But I have some good Bogues. I've got some bad Bogues. I've got some, uh, yeah, Sig Easy. Five pack of cartomizers, blank cartomizers. There's a Kanger Pro Tank 2 box. <laughs> Kanger Pro Tank 2. Wow, Vapor. Vapor for life. <gasps> oh, shit. I just got really, really excited and I and I hope it pays off. Oh, tell me what I want to hear, baby. Is this it? No. Shit. Damn it all. I thought this was a battery, but it's not. It is not a battery. Damn it. This is called a smile o miser. I think it is 510 though. Fuck yeah, it's 510. Let's put the smile o miser on something. This is, the guy who ran uh, Vapor for Life was such a funny, goofy dude. Um, and he called everything smile this and smile that. I bet I could put liquid on this. I bet we could vape this because it's got a 510. Ooh, see, now I'm excited. All right, let's, how much time do we have? Not much, damn it. Damn it. Yeah, I need a 901 stick battery, Mowgli Vapes. Oh, wait, wait. This is it. This is the battery. This is it. 
This is the battery. It's even a twister. It's even got the voltage adjustment on the bottom of the Vapor Life. Vapor for Life, they called this the dial a volt with the smile miser on it. And we're, of course, we're going to vape this. The thing is, the only way to charge this is with a 510 threaded charger, which I don't even know if I have. Mostly cardamizers in here. Uh, I got a few boxes, low resistance 901s that never opened. Vapor for Life, these are the same sort of smile misers Yeah, some Aspire, ooh, Aspire, Aspire replacement coils. Holy shit, are these Aspire Nautilus mini coil heads? Dang! So uh, there's also some really old bottles of e-liquid in here. This used to be my favorite e-liquid. I keep this bottle around so I can smell it. Oh, close it back up. Open it, smell it, close it back up. It smells bad now. But once upon a time, my wife, Casey, Casey Pickle, worked for this company. This is Pure Smoker, and they released their e-liquids, and they called them the Tonic line. Pure Smoker Tonic. And this was the Apollonia, and it was like a crispy, fresh green apple flavor. I couldn't, I could not get enough of it. I love the crap out of this e-liquid. What else is in here? Pure Smoker uh, Tonic Fire and Ice. Oh, shit. That's the, the menthol peppermint or the menthol cinnamon. Oh, my God in heaven. Uh, I'm instantly transported to the second vape fest that ever happened in St. Louis uh, because I vaped this out of a silver bullet and a at 901 atomizer the whole time. And then this was used to be my favorite tobacco. I don't know if you guys are hip to Raven vapes. Liam Lynch, look into it. He's a good dude, and he's been on the vlog before, actually. This was our favorite tobacco. Uh, there was a company called Vapor Station, and they sold a tobacco called Tampa that I could not get enough of. In fact, this is my favorite e-liquid of all time. There, this is just Chinese Marlboro. Just Chinese Marlboro. Just says Marlboro, 18 milligram, came from China. There was one Christmas where, oh my God. Oh my God. God. Why did I do that? That was the most foul fucking thing I've ever put in my mouth. Probably 11 year old e-liquid. Um, it's gone. It's bad now. It's gone bad. E-liquid will not, not last 11 years. It's bad now. That e-liquid is bad. I really want to try to vape this wow vapor guy. Okay. I'm going to look in this right here. Okay. Oh my God. Oh my fucking God. Well, I don't know, Ashton. I don't know. It's still, I can't get the taste out of my mouth. I cannot get that taste out of my mouth. Oh God, I spilled my beer everywhere. Oh my God, I spilled my beer on my Evolve. Oh my God, I spilled my beer on my AirPods. Son of a bitch. And I, sp I mean, and I spilled my beer. All right. Well, I hope you survive, Evolve Reflex. I got beer all in this cardamizer. There's beer in this. <coughs> oh, shit. Well, that'll be fun. I'll, I'll just clean that up later. That's... I was looking for my beer to drink and this is all that's left because the rest of it is on my desk. Son of a bitch and empty. Empty. Ugh, that was it, that's the last swallow. That was the final swallow. Here's the sponsor of the vlog, by the way. It says paid promotion. That means this. It's the coldest water bottle. They're a sponsor of the vlog. 
If you want to buy a water bottle, they're fucking amazing. It's the best water bottle I've ever had. I'll have a link in the description if you want to buy it. And if you buy one and you use my code, it helps me out too. I get a little bit of jingle. Uh, you know, I get a little bit of coin in my pocket and you get, besides an amazing palette for stickers, just the best bottle, bottle that exists. Now, holy shit was this. Now I'm upset about my desk and the beer situation. My room's just going to, my office is just going to smell like beer now. Hell, that might not be a bad thing. This, this is the, I don't even know how to explain this. Who's familiar with the idea of a gooseneck? Anybody? Flitz, are you here tonight? <laughs> is anybody familiar with the idea of a gooseneck? Beer, oh my God, Zach, you make an excellent point. Beer wouldn't spill if I filled up my coldest water bottle with beer. Dang. Now this. Anybody familiar with the idea of a gooseneck? There was this popular trend in vaping that I am, I don't know, I'm a little bit ashamed that I took part in it so intensely. It was called goosenecks. And before we get to goosenecks, let me show you this. You know Subohm Innovations? Does anybody remember Subohm Innovations? Well, Subohm Innovations released the worst product in the history of time and then got mad at me that I gave it a bad review. Like legitimately angry. I got, I got yelled at for giving this a bad review because I didn't understand it. It's a it's a hunk of shit is what it is, but there's, it's this dripper from Subohm Innovations. There's a deck down here, an airflow down here, and all that's up here is your tank. And the way that you get liquid to your coils is you press your drip tip in. You see this little hot plunger action happening right here? So it's this tiny little deck, and your tank itself, this tank holds a mill. Maybe a mill, mill and some change, maybe. And uh, I hated this thing. It never worked properly. I gave it a thousand tries uh, and I got in trouble. Like they yelled at me for giving it a bad review. So that's where Subohm Innovations and I kind of lost our way. These are the original Cardo tanks that we used to have at the Namber Juice. Fucking hell. You know when you have like a space that's like this big and everything in there just fits in there flawlessly with like no space at all. And so you get in there with like your finger and you're like trying to get something out and it just will not budge. That's this. Ah, Cardo tanks from vape shows back when I had a liquid company. These are the Cardo tanks. We would load up Cardos. This says donut. That was donut pounder. We would load up Cardos with donut pounder and have Cardo tanks for sampling e-liquids at vape shows. I think the last time these were used was at ECC in 2014. That was the last time any of these Cardo tanks were used. Now, stick batteries. I got plenty of DSE 901 stick batteries. The problem is all of these DSE 901 stick batteries are auto draw. And a 901 atomizer can't activate an auto draw 901 battery. Aren't you glad you guys know this now? So if you ever are in a time machine and you find yourself in 2009 and you're like, oh, maybe I want to vape, just remember that a DSE 901 atomizer won't work on an auto draw DSE 901 battery. Okay? That's, I'm giving you vaping advice from the past. Now, if we're going to talk about goosenecks, Let's do it. Let's talk about goosenecks. So this whole thing came about because it was a safety thing, right? Hang on. I can't find it. I can't. I can't find anything to put this on. Oh, here. I can put it on this vapor for life. It was a safety thing. Someone got into a car accident while vaping, you know, right in their throat. So this was invented. It's called the, it's called the gooseneck. And all it is, is just a bendy. It's just a bendy. And it's wired with a 510 on either side. So there's a negative 510 here, or positive 510 here, negative 510 here. 
So the idea was you could screw this contraption onto your battery, right, like this. And then your atomizer can go on the other side like this. And obviously this combo wouldn't work because again, auto draw, auto battery, there's no buttons to press. But imagine if this was a mod and this was an atomizer. Ah, yes, vaping with a gooseneck. Uh, and that was it, that's all it did. It, it just did this. It bent around all crazy all over the place and the idea was that it was a little bit of safety so that if you fell or something or you were rear-ended in your car while you were vaping, you wouldn't like, you know, down your, actually that might, safety, goosenecks. And this was, believe it or not, believe it or not, this was a trend in the vape scene in 2010 goosenecks were a trend and you were you were only really really cool if you used a gooseneck and you were only really really cool if you connected multiple goosenecks together and oftentimes it shows i myself could be seen walking around with a device with two goosenecks attached because why not why wouldn't you want to vape like this we can get these goosenecks to work i guarantee you if the connections are still good Okay, let's, let's, we're going to end this retro vape segment. We haven't even got to the drawers. Next week, the last vlog of the year, that's when we will finish this. How's that sound? Last vlog of the year, next week, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down in the chat. If you want to run long, no, I can't run long. I can't run too long tonight. I just can't. Let's see if we can get this gooseneck working, though. Uh, let's try it right here, right now with this because I do want to taste liquid. So I'm going to attach a gooseneck onto this AUG vape right here. And I'm going to attach my type 2 up here. And if everything goes to plan, no, it says no atomizer found. I'm assuming these goosenecks are probably dead. Okay. The, the, the wiring on the inside could have, uh, sounds good. Double gooseneck it? No, do it. Wait, okay. Next week? Yeah, next week. I feel like next week is going to be the best way to go. Yeah, you got to work early, Nephron. I know. Look, some of us have to get to work. Some of us have to get back to work. Some of us have to take a nap. Some of us have to sleep. <laughs> so I think we're going to do the rest of this retro box next week. The second half. If this gooseneck doesn't work, don't worry. We have more to choose from. Okay, no atomizer. That's the idea. I really wish this worked so that I could fire it and it would work. It's not making a 510 connection somewhere. You know, that connection's not working. It's messed up. Ian Thomas just says run long. No, run long? What? I'm, I can't, I don't want to run long. And, and I don't want to be, it's because I want to take my time. And when I talk about running long, I'm not talking about running long by like a half hour. I'm talking about running long by like another hour or so, maybe even longer. So I think we're gonna save all of these drawers. Oh, I think we're gonna save all the rest of those drawers for next week. In fact, let's vape a clearomizer. Let's try to find a, let's try to find a ego battery. Okay, I'm trying to not spend too long. Okay, there was an ego battery in here, but I don't think I, these are charged. Try not to look in there, you know. I want that to remain a surprise for next week. Here's an ego battery that apparently still works. And I have a clearomizer. Nope. Motherfucker. That's a 901. Son of a bitch. It's a 901 ego, uh, ego atomizer, ego battery. 24 hour live stream, Mowgli Vapes. 24 hour live stream. No, no. Let's, uh, let's start winding this down, okay? Next week, we're gonna pick up right where we left off with the tackle box, which look, this bums me out as much as it bums you out because 
I don't get to put my office back together for a full other week because this lives at the bottom, bottom, darkest depths of my closet and literally everything gets stacked on top of it. So all of this mess that I have over here, all of this mess that I have over here, I don't get to put any of that away. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. And next week, I'm going to try my best. I can't believe I didn't have... Is there another ego battery in here? I don't want to like spend too much time. Nope, that's not going to work. That will work. But it's dead. Oh, but... Oh, full-size USB charging on the bottom. Holy shit. All right. Well, now at least I have a battery that I can charge that we can vape a clearomizer with next week. Next week, we're straight up clearomizing vaping. Welcome, Bubba. I'm glad you made it. We're going to wind down right now. We're going to taste some liquids and uh, kind of bring this vlog to a close. Yeah, see, now it works. Okay, so that's the final retro box part one. <laughs> Are you guys disappointed? Do you think I'm milking this too much? Am I milking it too much? Next week, we're going to vape a clearomizer. Next week, we're going to vape a cardomizer. Next week, we're going to finish out the rest of what's in the tackle box. But... Shit, uh, let me know if anybody needs any Bogue cardamizers. Dude, I got stacks on stacks. Stacks of Bogue cardamizers. Like, I don't know what I was thinking buying all these cardamizers, knowing that this technology isn't, like, cardamizer is not going to be the greatest thing forever. Don't care. Buy as many cardamizers as you can. Buy DSE. Buy a five pack of 1.7 ohm DSE low res 901 atomizers and never use any of them. Just keep them forever. Keep them forever. Ugh. All right. All right. Oh. Did I mention that it weighs 2,000 pounds? So that is going to wrap up the super chat. Oh no, I spilled beer on your coils and on my Cali burn. <laughs> See if it still works. Oh, yeah, it's fine. It just tastes like beer now, which is fine. Oh, really testing the, the beer resistance of the uh, Aegis Boost over here. Hexome, you okay? Yeah, you're good. Vapor SOPM Lux. All right, my billet box. Going to smell like beer now. Spectacular. That makes me happy. Oh, good. My hard drives will smell like beer on the bottom, too. That's... <laughs> I'm so happy. Uh, let's, let's vape an e-liquid. Do you want to do a random liquid tasting or do you want to see if there's any super chats? Let's check that real quick. Stop it. Southern Comfort email was about the intake. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. Definitely tomorrow. Chris, very gracious of you. Didn't say nothing. You didn't have to. I appreciate you, Chris. CJ, yo, yo, dude, got the type two filled up with some lick it, loving it. Uh, if anyone doesn't like if anyone doesn't like the RTA, they're lying. <laughs> Good stuff, dude. CJ, I am overjoyed that you like the Type 2 RTA. I, you know, I knew that there was going to be people that are all about it. And for those people, it's that's it. It's baller. Baller. Eifer, how have you been, bro? Haven't seen you in a hot minute. Been chilling, man. Good to have you back. Bradley, part of the Cool Kids Club, finally. And I can't send you a message on Patreon. What? Yeah, you can. How do you do the $2 sales? I haven't seen anything. Hope you're doing good. Bradley, we just did some $2 sales on the live stream. I got some $2 sale boxes over here. All will be explained. I'll personally explain that to you, Bradley. Just DM me on Patreon. Now, I want to taste liquid. This is one of the most fun parts of the vlog for me. And I want to make sure that it gets to happen. Now, we're not going to do a Getting to Know Grim Green. Maybe next week we'll get to do another Getting to Know Grim Green. But for now, the Spotify playlist remains unchanged, still full of bangers. Just listened to it yesterday. I had it on Shuffle. It's amazing. I'll have a link down in the description where you can check out that Spotify playlist. But what we're going to do right now, let's taste an E-liquid. Wait, Grant. Grant, you changed my life. 
for my family and my kids. Smoke free five years. I know it doesn't seem like much, but thank you for everything. Grant, fucking that's amazing. Five years. Congratulations, Grant. I, for some reason, I want to sing you happy birthday. I wish there was a vape anniversary song. Can we write a vape anniversary song so when people have their vape anniversaries, I can sing it to them? Fuck it, tube. Can we bring back retro vaping laws? What? <laughs> what? Can we bring back retro vaping laws uh, pre-219? Yeah, that would be ideal, wouldn't it? <laughs> Hopefully, just not like not like 2010 California vape laws, like 2011 federal vape laws. That's what we need. And I knew that like we were headed downhill as soon as I started seeing those e-cigs in Walmart. I went, all right, we're we're in the, gonna be in the mainstream soon now. You know, like <sighs> politicians are gonna start noticing us now. You know, back in those early days of vaping, we, we felt like we just had this little club. You know, it's like, you, me, we vape. It's just us. We just, we're a club. We're like a little club and we're, we didn't want anyone to notice, you know? We're like, no. And people would come in and say, Hey, I just bought an e-cig. And they're like, here's how you use it. Shh, don't tell, no, here's how you do the thing. Yeah, do the, what's vape together. And then as soon as we started getting like mainstream, uh, you know, politicians eyes looking at us. And I remember, you know, California, we hear about a vape ban suddenly in California. And I'm like, Oh fuck. They found us. They found us. I don't know how, Marty, but they found us. So let's spend the rest of the last two minutes of the vlog trying out an e-liquid. It's going to be between one of these two. So we got Jubby's Juice. This is the something custard, full custardy. We got Jubby's Juice, full custardy here, or El Rascal's Pimp Sauce. Uh, Type Jubby if you want jubbies or pimp, if you want pimps, that's how I will decide what to vape. I'm open to either one of these. The pimps is supposed to be a strawberry cream, something like that. And the jubbies, well, it's jubbies. It's jubbies, uh, full custardy, full custardy. So vote now in the chat and let me know which ones I should vape. Um, I'll vape it. Full custardy or pimp? Pimp, jubby, pimp. Jubby, jubby, pimp, 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 jubby, pimp. Whoa, pimp for the win. I feel like that was a pimp landslide. Yeah, I, okay, I see jubbies, I see pimps. I see pimp, I see pimp, I see pimp, I see jubby. Dude, we're going with pimp. I can't, I can't believe that won. I was, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm not, I mean, I'm not entirely shocked, but we got L. Rascals. Pimp sauce, a divine elixir of sweet, juicy, creamy strawberries and milk. Yeah, pimp. Yeah, pimp seems to win. Cope, you think pimp? Logan, I appreciate that vote for Jubby. I think pimp won. Pimp just won. Oh, wait. There's some later vote. There's some late votes coming in here for Jubbies. There's some late votes. Hang on. Call the election commission. Start filing those lawsuits, Giuliani, because there might be an upset here with Jubby. No, I think still Pimp still won. Okay. There was some good votes there at the end for Jubby, but I think uh, I think Pimp won. That, look, that's democracy. I don't know what to tell you. Whoa. That tastes like strawberry, but hmm, we like donutty strawberry. You want a recount? <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was rigged, Lee. It was definitely rigged. I was leaning towards pimp anyway. Actually, I wasn't. I was kind of leaning towards Jubby's because Jubby's Juice, that name just kind of cracks me up. And, uh, uh, you know, full custardy? That's so clever. Next week, we're putting ju Jubby's back in the mix. We'll, we'll have you vote on Jubbies versus another one, but we're going to be tasting this today out of an original recipe recoil on top of my favorite of the favorites, Russian Custom Mods, Bonneville Mech Mod Single 21700. Let's get some Jubbies or, or some uh, Pimp Aroma in here. Oh. Oh, smells like a pimp. Smells like a pimp, like one of those pimps. Smells like a pimp. All right, pimp sauce. 
Pimp Sauce from El Rascals. I actually don't know where this came from. I want to say it's uh, Zealand. Yep, this is a New Zealand e-liquid. Zealand e-liquid. The Kiwis down there in Zealand. Original recipe recoil. Bonneville. White DHD. Let's have a toot of some Pimp Sauce. Okay. I find that very interesting. What I'm going to do right now is I just want to spend a little bit of time with this. I know it's 630 right now. I want to spend just a little bit of time of it. Yeah. smell o vision um, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time with it. So I'm going to cut my mic off and I'm going to go silent like right now. So the pimp sauce, El Rascal's Pimp Sauce out of New Zealand. Now, I have a few other liquids from this company that uh, maybe they can redeem themselves a little bit. But unfortunately, I hate to say this, but I don't think the pimp sauce is going to be quite for me. I was expecting a lot more strawberry. It says on the label that it's a sweet and juicy strawberries and cream milk. And to me, it tastes like this should be called cream The strawberry is the most like faint, distant, just whisper of strawberry that I've ever tasted. I mean, it's there. I, I get some strawberry sweetness. You kind of get a little bit of like a real natural, like strawberry seeds type of flavor, but it's overly, overly milky, overly, overly creamy. This could have been called creamy milk. Could have been called milky cream that's in a glass that is near a strawberry. Hyper creamy. Hyper creamy. Milky. That's all I get is like milky cream. Milky creamy, creamy cream milk. <laughs> Should I say it again? This reminds me of an e-liquid I tasted way back in the day. You can go way back on my YouTube if you can find it. But there's an e-liquid review that I did when I, back in the day when I reviewed e-liquids and they were like their own video. I reviewed this e-liquid called Cream. Back in the day, I got it from China. It was just called Cream Cream. And what it tasted like was flat beer foam. Like go grab a Natty Ice and pour it into a glass and let it warm. And then the warm beer foam, like that's what it tasted like. And I get a little bit of like that warm beer foam sort of flavor from this. It's like strawberry, creamy milk, a little bit of like warm beer foam. Yeah, it is. It would be like a look. It's like a LaCroix e-liquid kind of doesn't taste like much. I mean, my airflow's lined up. I got the recoil on a Mac. Like, I should be banging out the flavor right now. It's not banging out the flavor. It's not banging out the flavor, unfortunately. So my apologies to El Rascal's Pimp Sauce. I do have some more of your El Rascal's liquid. And uh, I'll, I'll give it another try. I'll give you another chance to redeem yourself. But the Pimp Sauce, it's just not for me. You guys made the wrong choice. 
I blame this solely on the voters. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. But I do. I, I, I do blame it uh, completely on the voters. This is a voting issue. This is a voter issue. Maybe I didn't get the voting blocks that I was looking for. I mean, it's like very slightly strawberry. It honestly reminds me a little bit, and I don't want to say it because there's no cheese going on in here. But for a while, there was a e-liquid line in the United States being put out by Brewwell. Whatever happened to Brewwell? They made some of my favorite liquids. They had a cornflake. Oh my God, it was so good. But they made a liquid called milk that tasted like Kraft macaroni and cheese powder. That's what the e-liquid tasted like. But they also made a strawberry milk that tasted like strawberry Kraft mac and cheese powder. I, I, it doesn't get a, I don't have a cheesy component to this, but it is that similar, like really subtle, natural strawberry and creamy, creamy milk with a little bit of warm beer foam on top. That's how we're leaving that. That's how we're leaving that. Oh, holy shit. I had a package from Smacks too that I didn't open. Yeah, we'll open it after the vlog. We'll open it on the Discord. All right, so I'm afraid that's going to be a hard pass from me on the El Rascal's pimp sauce, unfortunately. But you know what? Next week, we could have some jubbies. Could have some jubbies next week. So I think that is really where I'm going to wrap this all up. Let me take win one quick look and make sure I didn't forget anything. No, just a big mess. Just a big mess. You guys see my rotating Christmas tree back here? Do you guys notice that that rotates? There's a little pickle on it. A pickle ornament right there. Going right out of frame. See? Pickle? Yeah. Anyway, Merry Christmas. Happy whatever you celebrate. Merry, happy, and happy everything always. I appreciate you guys coming out. I always say this at the end of the vlog, but you guys that make it to the end of the vlog, you're, I'm gonna, you are my favorite people on earth. Think about that. On earth. And if I ever get the chance to meet you in real life, I do offer crisp high fives, crisp high fives, or uh, hopefully maybe, you know, maybe after, maybe after all this is over, we can go back to some regular, some good old hugs, some good old fashioned hugging. I miss hugging my friends. Damn it. You demand smacks. Well, you can demand all you want there, Rick Martin. <laughs> You're not going to get very far with me. I'm just kidding. Appreciate you being here, Rick Martin. Anyway, that's where we're going to end this vlog. Uh, that's it. We're done. We're at the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, you're my favorite people. We already did that speech. And uh, remember, please remember that no matter what anybody tells you, remember that no matter what any human tells you, any other human, vaping is at least, at least, maybe more, at least 95% less harmful for you than burning those deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. It's called harm reduction, and that's what we do here, everybody. But I appreciate you guys coming out. No matter what's in your hand, even if it's this, even if it's a mix with no atomizer on it, no matter what is in your hand, you guys, let's keep on vaping. Be excellent to each other, everybody. I'll see you next week. Peace.